For this divergence theorem example, we will consider the flux of an electrostatic field E, uh, and this electrostatic field is due to a point charge of charge Q centered at zero, zero. So E of position vector R gives the field at a position R due to this charge at the origin. Recall that R is the position vector xi plus yj plus zk, and um, in addition, the magnitude of R is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, uh, which is equal to rho, uh, the distance from the origin in spherical coordinates. We'll start by finding the divergence of this vector field. This is the partial of E1 with respect to x, plus the partial of E2 with respect to y, plus the partial of E3 with respect to j, where the vector field is written as E1 for the i component, E2 for the j component, and E3 for the k component. For the vector field above, there's this 1 over magnitude of r cubed uh, q that's part of every component, and so let's write out the EI component. It's Q over magnitude of R cubed times X. The E2 uh, is quite similar with a Y instead of an X, and E3 is very similar as well with a Z instead of an X. Now let's start computing this divergence. To compute the divergence, we can't treat the magnitude of R cubed as a constant because actually the magnitude of R depends on X. So I've written this all the way out in terms of X, and we're going to be computing the partial of E1 with respect to X. So we're going to need to use the product rule for that. So we have uh, the derivative of this term times everything that's left, and the derivative of X is just 1. So we have Q, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared to the negative 3 halves. And then um, we'll keep the Q and the X, and we'll take the derivative of this piece, and we'll also need to use the chain rule. So we have Q, X, and negative 3 halves x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the negative 5 halves times a 2x. Rewriting these um, in terms of rho, actually, x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 1 half is rho, we find that the partial of E1 with respect to x is q, rho to the negative 3, minus 3, q, x squared, rho to the negative 5. And um, I can factor so that this becomes q, rho to the negative 3, times 1 minus 3x squared rho to the negative 2. We can use symmetry to figure out the partial of e2 with respect to y because uh, those were the same except for that the roles of x and y were switched. So that will be, so that, will be that um, the rows stick around but the x becomes a y and for the partial of e3 with respect to z, the x squared will become a z squared. So these are the three partials that contribute to the divergence, and now to find the divergence, we just need to take their sum. So we have that the divergence is equal to q rho to the negative 3, 1 minus 3x squared rho to the negative 2, plus 1 minus 3y squared rho to the negative 2, plus 1 minus 3z squared rho to the negative 2. These ones combine to form a 3, um, and so let's just do some more factoring. Factoring out the 3, we have 3q rho to the negative 3, times 1 minus rho to the negative 2, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. So this is going to be 3q rho to the negative 3 times 1 minus 1, which is 0. Something important to note is that this divergence is 0 everywhere where we were able to compute it. But actually, um, right at the origin, there's a problem. This 1 over rho, this 1 over rho cubed is not defined right at the origin, where rho is 0. And so we have a 1 over 0 problem right there. This divergence is perfectly well defined everywhere except the origin. So everywhere except the origin, this is 0. So for the electrostatic field, Q 1 over magnitude of r cubed r, we have a divergence of 0. Um, for every point that's not the origin. What does this tell us about the flux of this field out a closed surface? Well, um, we have the divergence theorem.
which tells us that the flux is equal to the triple integral over the region of the divergence of E dV, so long as the divergence is defined everywhere on the region. For a, re a solid region W, where the origin is not in the region, uh, the divergence is defined everywhere, and for this particular field, it's zero, so this triple integral is zero. That means that the flux out of any region that doesn't include the origin is just going to be zero. Uh, that's amazing. What if we want to flux out through a sphere of radius A that's centered at zero, zero, zero? Well, so this sphere is not a solid region, of course. It's um, just the sphere. But it would be nice to be able to use the divergence theorem. Uh, but to use the divergence theorem to find this flux, we would need to integrate over the solid region enclosed by this surface. And unfortunately, the origin is in that solid region. And um, the divergence isn't defined at the origin. So for this particular surface, a sphere of radius A centered at the origin, and we're interested in the flux outward, um, we're not going to be able to use the divergence theorem. We have to compute the flux directly. However, uh, that's not so bad. What is the direction of the vector field? It's some number, whatever this magnitude is, times r. Well, r is, r is the position vector at a point. So it's a vector that's always pointing radially outward from the origin. As you look at this drawing, as I draw these radially outward vectors, I hope that what you're noticing is that these vectors are actually perpendicular to the surface of the sphere at every single point. They're the outward normal vectors to the sphere. And so actually, this vector field um, is like completely outward through this sphere. It has no component that passes along the sphere. At every single point, these vectors are just pushing completely outward. If you think about setting up a flux integral over a sphere, <clears throat> you probably recall that we're going to need to take E on the sphere dot dA. But this observation that these vectors are pointing directly outwards means that actually mm, these vectors dot dA, the cosine is going to be 1 because they have the same orientation. These vectors are already normal to surface elements of the sphere. We can see that mathematically if we look at this vector dA. So this vector dA was given by sine phi cosine theta, and there's an a squared here. So um, sine phi cosine theta, that's just x over the radius. And um, sine phi sine theta, that's y over the radius. And cosine phi, that's z over the radius. And so this vector is clearly in the same direction as xi plus yj plus zk, since um, it's just some kind of scaled multiple of that direction. Okay, so when we take this dot product, we actually just need to take the magnitude of these two vectors and integrate that. So e dot dA is just equal to the magnitude of e times the magnitude of dA, because the cosine is always going to be 1. This is the double integral over um, some representation of the sphere. What's e? It's q over the magnitude of r cubed. But while we're on the spherical surface, um, the magnitude of r should be a everywhere. And so this is q over a cubed. And then um, times the magnitude of the r vector, which is again a. And then times the magnitude of the dA vector, um, which I'm just going to write down as uh, dA, where this is a little piece of a sphere. So we're integrating over a whole sphere, little pieces of the sphere, and we're integrating a constant, q over a cubed times a. And so this is equal to q over a squared times the area of the sphere. Uh, the area of a sphere is 4 pi a squared, so we get 4 pi 
Q. So, so that the radius of the sphere didn't matter. So long as we have an electric charge of Q, the electrostatic field associated with that um, will have a flux through a closed sphere that includes the charge at the origin of 4 pi Q. One more question. Let S be a closed surface oriented outwards and surrounding the origin. So S is not necessarily a sphere. What is the flux of this electrostatic field through S? We really haven't been told anything about S here. There's no way that we can set up a flux integral. Um, our only hope is that there may be some way to use the divergence theorem to figure this out. Here's some sort of strange surface S that does enclose the origin. And we want to know the flux of the field out through this surface. Well, something worth observing is that we can draw a tiny little circle of a tiny little sphere of some radius a that is entirely within our surface s. No matter how close the surface s gets to the origin, we can just draw a sphere with a radius half that distance. So we could find the distance that's the closest that s gets to the origin and just draw a sphere at half that radius. So let's pretend that's the sphere. Now think about the region in between this sphere and S. I'm going to try to shade that region in a little bit. Consider that to be the region W in between S and this sphere. Well, W doesn't contain the origin within that solid region. And so we know that the triple integral over W of the divergence of E dV is equal to 0. But by the divergence theorem, we also know that the divergence in this region is equal to the flux through its boundary. There are two pieces to this boundary. There's um, one piece of the boundary is S, with arrows pointing outward, and the other the piece of the boundary is the sphere, with arrows pointing inward, because the arrows on the boundary of W need to point away from the region W. So this is the flux out S plus flux to origin through sphere. Well, how does this help us? Let's see. We know that 0 is equal to the flux outward through S plus the flux to the origin through the sphere. Well, we know from our calculation that the flux outward through this sphere is 4 pi q, so the flux inward through the sphere should be negative 4 pi q. So 0, this divergence, is equal to the flux out s minus 4 pi q. That means that our flux out s equals 4 pi q. So this is amazing for this particular vector field this electrostatic field due to a, a charge at the origin, for this particular vector field, if a surface encloses the origin, then the flux out that surface is going to be 4 pi q. And if a closed surface doesn't enclose the origin, it doesn't enclose the charge, then the flux is going to be 0. So if you contain the point charge, flux 4 pi q. If you don't, flux 0. That's so amazing. It doesn't matter where the charge is located within a surface. It just matters that the surface encloses the charge. And so this is something where when the divergence is 0, we're really able to equate the flux out of quite disparate surfaces because we know that there's no contribution um, via the divergence theorem from the region in between them. There's sort of no sources within this region of any, any kind of flux.